To this day, War Games still holds up as a textbook example of how to make a crowd-pleasing thriller with a resonant theme and well-written characters. That theme is the dangers of artificial intelligence gaining too much control, a theme that was explored by James Cameron just a year later with The Terminator and in later films like The Matrix. Another central theme of war games is the inherent no-win scenario of nuclear warfare, a bit of a continuation of Stanley Kubrick's 1964 black comedy masterpiece, Dr. Strangelove. War Games started as a far simpler story of a dying scientist hoping to pass his knowledge on to an intelligent but troubled teen. But Walter F. Parks and Lawrence Lasker, the film's screenwriters, soon added the concept of computer hacking in the military. This hacking is personified in the character of David Lightman, a character who is a highly intelligent underachiever, and he is essentially our guide through the movie's clever plotting and resonant theme. Part of this clever plotting is the fact that we are introduced to David's genius with computers by witnessing him breaking into the school's computer system and changing his grade from fail to pass. Not one to let a clever plot point go to waste, the filmmakers also use this ability to develop the romantic subplot between David and Jennifer, a girl from his class who is also in academic trouble. David changes her grade from fail to pass, even after she protests. This accomplishes two things. First, it expresses David's affection for her without dialogue or spelling it out for the audience, which many, many other lesser films do. Second, it subtly introduces David's penchant for troublemaking and breaking the rules. This one plot point not only advances the plot, it also develops the character of Lightman and introduces the love theme. The theme of artificial intelligence and its dangerous implications are not the only takeaways from war games. The idea that neither AI or humans can be entrusted with the safety of the planet is also present. The very first scene presents the entire ethical problem of nuclear war in a nutshell. Two men, tasked with the safety or death of millions of people, ultimately come to a disagreement, and one of the men threatens the other with death if he doesn't turn his missile key that will initiate the deaths of over 20 million citizens. The man with the gun represents the cold, harsh, undeterred willpower of the military who will stop at nothing to gain control and the other represents the moral ethical purity of the human soul and its refusal to be a mindless drone who simply follows orders even if those orders are to commit mass genocide this is the dual-edged theme at the heart of the movie the preoccupation with artificial intelligence is a bit of a smokescreen in this regard the AI in the film simply acts as an extension of the human theme I just mentioned. This AI takes the form of Joshua, a program written by Stephen Falcon, a character named after one of the inspirations for the film, Stephen Hawking. Joshua is brilliantly presented in the form of a computerized voice that sounds both innocent and childlike, but also creepy and diabolical. Shall we play a game? The film manages to give Joshua the air of an actual personality, even though its communications are straightforward and without the color of human pleasantries. In the end, Joshua comes off as a big, dumb, but supremely powerful child, one who absorbs the lessons of the theme only after playing a game of tic-tac-toe. You couldn't come up with a more ingenious way to express what is at the heart of the film's message, that ultimately there is no point in nuclear war, as all roads lead to total annihilation of the planet and those fighting to stay alive in the first place. The film has a remarkable ability to present innocent everyday life and slowly unravel it with the creeping dread of a world-ending event like nuclear war. The film subtly builds this contrast to the acting and music. Broderick is fantastic as David Lightman and has just the right amount of sweetness and innocence of youth, but also the conviction of someone who has supreme belief in his abilities and point of view. The film also gives David some amazing MacGyver-like skills that allows him to cleverly escape his imprisonment. The film's theme of the futility of nuclear war can also be traced back to these skills, for it's these skills that cause David to break into Norad's computer and begin Joshua's attempts at nuclear war. But even more importantly, it highlights human beings and their desire to continue breaking through boundaries and into places that they shouldn't be meddling. 
the invention of the nuclear bomb itself is possibly one of the most disastrous mistakes humans have ever made. Einstein greatly regretted his part in the development of these frightening weapons, and they continue to be the great big boogeyman that keeps societies in a constant state of anxiety. The relationship between Falcon and McKittrick is another highlight. The relationship between the two men is only hinted at throughout the film, and when they finally meet in the film's third act, only two lines need to be said to sum up their relationship. I don't know what you think you could do here, Stephen. John, good to see you. To see the wife still picks your time. This is brilliant storytelling in motion. Short, economical dialogue that allows the actors themselves to suggest the lives and relationships of the characters. Falcon's obsession with dinosaurs is another brilliant example of suggesting a film's theme through metaphor rather than spelling it out. As dinosaurs were another species wiped out by a cataclysmic event with the same kind of destructive force as a nuclear strike. And witness the amazing ethical conundrum it presents as Falcon believes humans are nothing more than a passing species like the dinosaurs and not the end-all be-all dominance we like to think we are. And this perfectly dovetails into Falcon's character, his age and cynicism exacerbated by the painful loss of his family has led him to take on this morbid point of view of humanity. The senselessness of his loss has allowed him to accept the seeming senselessness of existence. Nuclear annihilation is simply a natural extension of his beliefs. It is layer upon layer of expert screenwriting, expressing theme with character and having the two support one another. And of course it is David, his love for Jennifer and their innocent and youthful points of view which bring Falcon around and allow him to see the light among the darkness. Having the AI personified as the son he lost, being the key architect of this coming nuclear holocaust, and who Falcon ultimately reunites with in the last sequence, is just poetry in motion. So many films fail to create these kinds of brilliant thematic and character relationships. Even decades later, War Games remains a staple of the genre. James Dane. The only winning mood is not to play. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe button, as I'll be posting more content in the future. Thanks for watching.